Many farmers believe that their job is complete when the tail door of the lorry is closed and their cattle head off to the factory. While this may have been the case 10 years ago when we had intervention in third world markets, things have now changed. If Irish beef is to command a premium price, both farmers and processors must work together to ensure that we're producing what the market requires. In this section, we're going to look at the deboning process. We'll show the difference between a U and an O grading carcass and the different levels of fat that have to be trimmed off a carcass grading fat class 3 and one grading fat class 4H. We'll also see where the various cuts of beef come from when we walk the line with general manager here in AIBP Clonus, George Mullen. We're here in the chiller. At this stage, the animal has been slaughtered and the carcass split in two. Behind me are two carcasses. The one on the left is from a U-grading animal and the one on the right is from an O-grading animal. Both carcasses are suspended from the hind legs. At the top, you have the hind quarter and at the bottom, you have the fore quarter. Despite being of the same weight, both carcasses are significantly different. The U-grading carcass has much more meat around the hind quarter and has a much deeper loin. Not only is there a much higher meat yield from the U-grading carcass, but the meat is also of a much higher value. The high price roasting and staking cuts, such as the top side, silver side, rump and knuckle are all here at the top of the hind quarter, while down at the bottom of the hind quarter we have our strip loin, and then at the back we have the jewel in the crown, the fillet. After the deboning process, this is basically what you're left with. What you have here is your rump and your knuckle, which is basically used for frying. You've got your top side and your silver side, which are predominantly used for roasting and you've got your strip loin and your fillet, which are predominantly staking cuts. Moving on to the flank, used for burger manufacturing. Just then, what you have here is some dice for stewing and basically some trimming that's left over after the boning process. As you can see, the U-grading carcass will have a much higher yield of these high-priced cuts than the O-grading carcass. Despite being of the same weight, the O-grade carcass is much longer and narrower. Therefore, an awful lot more meat to come from the O-grade will be in the form of mincing and dicing and will have a much lower value. This is the reason why the U-grading carcass has a much higher market value than the O-grade. Out in the farm we discussed the importance of marketing cattle at the correct fat score. Here we have two ore grading carcasses, however despite both carcasses being of good confirmation, this carcass is unsuitable and not what the market requires. As you can see it has an excessive layer of fat down along the line and here around the ribeye. Despite this carcass at one stage being at the correct fat score, the farmer has held the animal too long and has overfed it. This is a fat class 3 carcass. It has a nice light covering of flesh here down along the line over the rib and in around the eye muscle. When the two carcasses behind me go down into the boning hull, this is the amount of fat that's going to have to be trimmed to the fat class 3 carcass and this is the amount of fat that's going to have to be trimmed to the fat class 5 carcass. Remember, at farm level it takes three times as much feed to put on one kilo of fat as it does a kilo of meat. When we start to break the carcasses down, the excess levels of fat in the fat class 5 become clearly evident. Here with the bone in loin from a fat class 3, a nice covering of fat over the loin, but look at the fat class 5, thick wages of fat right down along the loin as is clearly evident here at the front. What we have here is the bone in rib from the fat class 3, a nice covering of fat over the top of the rib, but again our fat class 5 rib has thick layers of fat not only over the top of the loin but in around the eye. Selling your cattle at the correct weight is key to making sure they meet market requirements. The smaller carcass behind me is 360 kilos and is an ideal carcass weight. However, the other carcass is almost 500 kilos. The problem with these larger carcasses is that when they go down into the boning hull, the primal cuts are simply too big. We feel our traceability standards in AIBP are very strong. Uh, we've very computerised, the animals are uh, identified from when they come into the factory right through the deboning procedure, right through to the uh, situation where they're packed and boxed off, we can trace back the animals. There are four or five key stages. We take the carcasses out of the chills, we uh, bring them to the intake procedure where we quarter them, then we, uh, we scan the, each quarter into the boning hall, we debone the quarters, we, uh, we, they go up onto the trimming stations where they're trimmed, weighed, graded, then they go on to be packed, they're boxed and trade off and go into the backpack chill um, where they await uh, transport on to the customer. The carcass weight issue um, is one that has always caused debate in the, in, in the industry and as you've seen down in the boning hall, 
where we showed you templates of the different sizes, uh, the, the strip lines, the very big strip lines that didn't fit the templates. The likes of these strip lines are, are from very heavy carcasses and we would have to downgrade the likes of those strip lines for roasting as opposed to making steaks from them. And that runs through quite a few other cuts in, in, in the carcass. The main areas the farmers would need to focus on uh, for, to, to supply the correct animals for the marketplace are they would want to be members of the Board B of Farm Quality Insurance Scheme. They'd want to finish their animals under 30 months of age. They would also want uh, to try and finish the animals that would end up being an R or a U grade, a fat score 3 or 4L. A farmer that would be unsure of the specification for the factories should contact the factory and um, talk to the procurement manager on site who, who would either go out and make a visit to the farmer himself or send one of the, our, our, net, our agents from our network out to see them and discuss their situation, find out have the cattle um, ready for slaughter and um, then we would invite the farmer to come in, see the animals slaughtered, see the anti-mortem process, see the uh, hides graded for dirt, go up and see his cattle uh, weighed, go up and see them graded and then come down and visit the office and collect his check. At AIBP we have a very strong policy that payment on the day is available at all times. We saw today the problems processors face with overweight carcasses and the inefficiencies of letting cattle get too fat. It's important that we as beef producers realise that the day of expecting someone else to market what we produce is gone. Both processors and farmers must work together to ensure the product we are producing meets the needs of the consumer.